All right, welcome to the complex math and vectors uh, little tutorial. I'm going to use a voltage waveform, but this works not only for voltage, but it works for current, resistance, and power, and actually anything that you're going to do in a, in a phase or, uh, or rectangular form. Uh, let's begin. Think about the uh, the voltage waveform uh, equation. So Vp times sine of 2 pi Ft plus theta. All right, Vp is the magnitude. How tall that waveform is going to be? It's in, measured at peak. In this case, it's measured volts peak. F frequency. Uh, that is how fast is that waveform changing? We measure that in hertz. T is in time. That is the independent variable. That's measured in seconds. Uh, theta. Theta is the phase shift. So if we look at time as, a, uh, as angular, uh, we can, that's the position of shift from the zero cross of the axes that the waveform is going to cross zero. Uh, that's when the waveform starts, essentially. We're going to dictate the waveform beginning at a zero cross. All right, so with that in mind, uh, the, the sine equation is still in your mind. We can represent that same wave, not only this way, but we can represent it in a vector form in polar notation. Uh, this works just like in physics when you talk about forces. With electricity, we use RMS value of the waveform and the magnitude and the phase angle and the direction. So uh, in this case, it would be, we would use the number V R M S angle theta. That's telling us the exact same thing uh, as uh, the waveform up above. Instead of using peak, we're using RMS, we're using theta, and uh, we're assuming Sixty hertz. If it's anything other than sixty hertz, we'll tell you. Uh, so we're going to use the RMS value and the magnitude and the direction of the waveform. Uh, this allows us to draw the waveform as a vector and do tip-to-tail math like forces in physics. So in this case, we're going to use a number of five. The RMS. We still have an unknown angle of theta, and that's okay. Uh, we can find that. I'm using the number five because we have the magic three, four, five triangle, and we're going to be able to know the real and reactive uh, voltages along the way here. So, if we look at this, um, That's our vector of 5 volts with an unknown angle. If we use our sine cosine and tangent identities, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And opposite over adjacent. This being hypotenuse. This being adjacent. This being opposite. So if we use those identities, we can find that V1 is the resultant of V2 and V3. V3 has an angle 90 degrees. V2 has an angle 0 degrees. Okay? We can also find
using c squared equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. This being C, this being A, this being B. We know 5 volts in a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so we're going to call V2 3 volts. We're going to call V3 4 volts. That is a way that we can express in rectangular format. In our rectangular format, we express 3 plus J4. Okay? This can be expressed in what we call the rectangular format, where the value of, of 3 is called the real value, and the value of 4 is called the imaginary value of the component. I want to also note the J. J, not I. As an electrical engineer, I equals current. So to remove that confusion, electrical engineers use J as their notation. Um, so there you go. That's our resultant. Uh, we could pull up a calculator here. Maybe, maybe not. All right. That's our work through um, to find the theta. You can do the inverse tangent. Uh, we did 3, 4, 5, opposite over adjacent, so that's 4 over 3, and that will give you your theta in this case. Alright, thank you very much.